Draconids are some of the most dangerous predators in the Witcher 3 universe, not only because of their great strength and speed, but also because of their ability to fly. Today's entry is about a monster that falls under this class, and although it's not the most dangerous of the Draconids, it certainly has led to many contracts for monster hunters of all kinds. To begin, I want to answer a question that I imagine many of you who know the lore of the Witcher were probably asking when you saw the title of today's entry. This question being, why are you calling a wyvern a draconid? Well, draconids are usually classed as four to six legged winged animals, with some level of intelligence. And of course wyverns are winged, but they only have two legs, and of course they are said to be completely ruled by instinct. Although, as I'll explain later, that isn't necessarily true. My reason for referring to these beasts as draconids lies in the fact that in The Witcher 3, these beasts are classed as draconids. It's actually quite interesting, because in The Witcher 1, they weren't classed as draconids, and were in fact classed as ornithosaurs, which are said to be just simple beasts ruled by instincts. But, their classification was later changed in The Witcher 3 to be Draconids. I personally was initially confused by this change, but after looking in the Witcher book, The World of the Witcher, made by CD Projekt Red, it cleared up a lot of my confusion, as it basically explains the change by saying that although Wyverns are now classed as Draconids, they are more specifically classed as Lesser Draconids. Lesser Draconids are said to be similar to the normal Draconids, just significantly smaller, only possessing two legs and generally having long slender necks. Lesser Draconids include species such as Slizzards, Forktails, and of course Wyverns. Anyway, as stated earlier, Wyverns act completely on instinct. They are primal, violent beasts and will kill pretty much any living creature they are able to kill and then eat. It's a long-standing rumour that they hunt virgin maidens specifically, although this is just a bit of a misconception as they will kill and hunt anything they are able to. They don't have a particular disposition towards virgin maidens or anything else for that matter. As long as they can kill and eat it, they will. Wyverns have large sharp teeth and they are able to use their long slender necks to attack their opponents like a striking snake but they also possess other offensive abilities such as sharp talons on their hind legs and their large tails. Unlike most draconids, wyverns are quite venomous and they are able to spit acidic poison with deadly accuracy at their prey. Failing that, they are also able to directly inject venom into their opponent through the use of the stinger on the end of their tails. Their tails also possess bony spikes, which is I suppose just to add that little bit more offensive power to these monsters. When fighting this creature on the ground, they have been known to use a series of fast attacks, including all their offensive abilities that were just stated, but whilst on the ground, they aren't exactly good at dodging, so this is definitely the most effective time to attack and potentially kill this creature. These creatures also utilise their ability to fly, and are able to fly well out of crossbow range, but despite this, they are able to then follow up with a very quick swoop attack that is best avoided. Well, unless you want to be torn to shreds. There are currently only two known variations of Wyvern, the Wyvern, and the Royal Wyvern. The Royal Wyvern is the same as its lesser species in basically every respect, except it is larger, more venomous, and based on certain events in The Witcher 3, perhaps even more intelligent. Earlier I stated that Wyverns are thought to be mindless beasts, at least compared to say, a proper dragon. However, a royal wyvern in The Witcher 3 did at least appear to possess some level of higher intelligence, at least compared to other wyverns. In The Witcher contract, Phantom of the Trade Route, a royal wyvern had been discovered to have made a habit of lurking by roadsides, waiting for military transports, at which point it would attack and eat the contents of the transport. In fact, it had been so successful in its endeavour that it had expanded until it began to resemble a dragon more than its lesser kin. Obviously this royal wyvern was eventually defeated by Geralt, but it is noted how much stronger and resilient this monster was, at least compared to the other wyverns. Personally, I would say that this event definitely reveals to us that wyverns aren't as mindless as we once thought. There are also a few visual differences between at least this royal wyvern and the general wyverns found in The Witcher 3. For example, this wyvern possesses some sort of hair or fur, and has a large set of what I would describe as horns. In The Witcher 1, a royal wyvern can also be encountered, but in the case of The Witcher 1, it is a large female known as Moa. She appears similar to the other wyverns of that game, except she is much larger and instead red. In The Witcher 1, you can actually meet a group of druids whilst on your adventure. These druids are accompanied by many non-human creatures, such as a dryad and an elf, but they are also accompanied by tamed wyverns. 
It is never directly revealed how they managed to tame these creatures, but I did manage to find one quote that perhaps might provide a bit of an indication as to how they might have managed it. This quote is actually from a druid and states, whoever claims that dog is a man's best friend has probably never tamed a wyvern. Even though I know this quote doesn't reveal much, it led to me developing a bit of a theory that perhaps the druids managed to domesticate these creatures, although I wouldn't exactly call a tamed wyvern domesticated, through the same methods humans used to tame wolves. Perhaps the druids found young or injured wyverns and either raised them or nursed them back to health, creating a bond between druid and wyvern and allowing for their domestication. Alternatively, they may have simply used some form of magic. These are just a few theories that I'm throwing around, but obviously this could just be a little bit of a discrepancy in the lore, as in The Witcher 1, they certainly did play a bit fast and loose with it in many other areas. Wyverns can actually be damaged by more than just silver, at least in the lore, meaning that although silver is the most effective means to kill them, using magic and steel weapons can also suffice when fighting these creatures, as although their hides are tough to pierce, they aren't nearly on the same level as, say, a dragon. When fighting these monsters, including looking out for and trying to avoid all of the attacks mentioned before, I would recommend having some golden aureole before fighting these creatures, just to negate any poisonous effects that might be acquired through battling them. Of course, Quen would also prove useful, like in any fight, and also I think draconid oil is just a given. I would also recommend Ard and the bomb grape shot, as if they can be utilized well, they can bring this monster to the ground, which allows you to get a few good hits in and finish it off as quickly as possible. If you manage to defeat one of these monsters, that will also allow you to potentially harvest materials such as dragon scales, wyvern hide, wyvern eggs, wyvern mutagens, a wyvern trophy, monster blood, monster bones, monster brains, monster eyes, and finally, monster claws. These monsters have been said to be sighted in northeastern Velen. However, it was stated in the Tower of the Swallow that they have been known to fly to areas such as the Isle of Spikarog in Skellige, especially in the winter. They have also been said to make their homes in high mountainous areas and have been spotted all across the continent. All in all, I can say it's safe to say they can be found in most areas in the wilderness and beyond as they are highly adaptable and possess the ability to fly. Finally, wyverns are mentioned a little bit in the books, but I believe only one is actually fought, and surprisingly it wasn't by Geralt. It was in fact by a young Ciri. A young wyvern had been caged and put on display for the local townspeople, with the capturer claiming it to be a basilisk. Ciri, fairly fresh out of her care more and training, knew that it was of course a young wyvern, and confronted the capturer. Long story short, it broke out of its cage and Ciri defeated it, leading to Ciri having to claim it was a squire that accomplished this feat as she was trying to keep a low profile. It is also mentioned later in the same book by the sorcerer Dorigare that wyverns are in fact endangered, and considering how much time passes between this book and The Witcher 3, I personally wonder how many are actually left on the continent by that point in the story. Anyway guys, that's the end of today's lore video. I hope you've all learned something new, or at least enjoyed the video. These videos take me a long time to make, so I would really appreciate you liking it, as liking it lets me know you want more and support this sort of content. As always, be sure to subscribe if you're new, as I do Witcher lore videos every week, and if you subscribe, you won't miss them. Be sure to follow my Twitter for updates and Twitch, as I've actually been streaming a lot of Gwent recently, as well as story games, and I would love to challenge more of you to a game of Gwent. Honestly, it's just nice to make fun decks based on characters that I like and talk Witcher lore with you all, so come and check it out. It's twitch.tv slash therangergeorge, and there's a link in the description if you can't be bothered to type anything in. Also, be sure to join the Reddit and Discord, and maybe even follow my Instagram. Finally, as always, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges. You guys are honestly so kind, and I really appreciate appreciate your continued support. You really help with making the videos, and I'm glad to put all of your names at the end of today's video. Anyway guys, that's in today's lore video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.